Hi there, this is Danny. I'm so glad you're here. The channel is called You and Me Living Free, and I'm coming to you today from Rocky Mountain, from the Rocky Mountains. I'm not actually in the park right now, but I'm very close. And I've been spending the last couple of days exploring the Rocky Mountain National Park and the surrounding area, and you will see those videos shortly. But I thought I would take a few minutes and tell you what I did to try to make my long driving days suck less, okay? My first plan around was, I don't need to take long driving days, I can take shorter days because this trip is gonna be seven, it's gonna be seven weeks. So I don't have to worry about those long driving days. I don't need a strategy, right? That's what I told myself. Well, wrong. <laughs> and the reason it's wrong is because I'm in the van and I have to be very careful about really hot temperatures. And um, we are having huge heat wave all across the nation. I needed to get from Kansas City to the, to the Rocky Mountains in one day. That was, it was over 10 hours behind the wheel. And then with stops and everything, it was about a 12 hour day for me. So I needed a strategy and it was really actually like an eight point strategy, but I'm gonna give you four main areas of things that I tackled to make these long drive days suck less because I don't think I'll ever love a long drive day, but if I have to do one, then these things are gonna help alleviate. So there's four categories. I'm gonna go through them really quickly. They are entertainment. I upgraded my entertainment in the car. I um, did a little more research, a little more logistical planning. I looked at things that had frustrated me in the past and made plans for those when I would hit those things again. And the last thing was managing my own expectations. And I think this is the biggest thing on the list. Uh, before we dig right into that though, I'm just gonna do a little 360 and show you where I am parked for free. My overnight camping here in the Rockies in uh, Roosevelt National Forest and it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna sit here and tell you what I did to make these long drive days suck less and how it's working. Okay, just really quickly, cause I just watched my own intro and I've noticed I'm waving this thing around. <laughs> so I wanna tell you, this is my purchase for today. This is a Colorado koozie holder or whatever you wanna call it um, for my beer. I already had one cause I'm in for the night, but look at this on the back. It's got a little bottle opener. How cute is that? So I had one beer and then I thought, well, I can't have another one until I A, drink a bunch of water because at this elevation, I just have to be very careful about staying hydrated. So I drink water, water, water. And number two, because, um, why? Oh, because I want to be able to concentrate <laughs> to do the video. Okay, that's funny. Okay, so let's talk about upgrading my entertainment. I listen to audiobooks. A lot of people may listen to podcasts. Um, whatever you do in the car you listen to, maybe you listen to music. I do mostly audiobooks, but then I also will do um, music. So I made myself a special playlist for the car that were just fun things about driving and about um, moving and changing and leaving stuff behind. Like I just created, I looked on Spotify and then I modified one of their playlists for, um, driving for classic, classic road trips or something is the name of the, the playlist. And actually once I get back to cell coverage, maybe I'll put that in the details if you really want to know. But the important thing is just to do music that you like. It doesn't really matter what I'm doing, but do music that you like. I was kind of tired of, you know, my usual music that I is kind of my go-to that I listen to. So I made it a point to create a new playlist. And that helps because mostly I listen to audiobooks, but when you're listening to an audiobook, you can only really take it for so long before that kind of monotony you, you kind of stop listening and you don't want to pay that kind of attention. So I needed something to break it up. Plus, I do like silence. Every once in a while, I will just be quiet in the car, which can be very refreshing as well. But when you're driving across like Kansas and Eastern Colorado, there's not much to look at or anything. So, you know, you have to kind of take it as it goes. So I upgraded my playlist. I also got an audiobook that I have really been wanting 
I like a couple of authors that I like write really long books like George R. R. Martin and also Ken Follett. Ken Follett writes uh, historical fiction, but his books are super long. So the audiobook might be 29 or 30 hours. <laughs> And he has a trilogy that I haven't listened to the last book in the trilogy. So I thought, oh, that'll be perfect. So I'm downloading just favorite things because I tend to look at this long car drive. What I've done in the past is I look at this long car drive and I say, oh, I've got that so-and-so audiobook that I haven't finished yet. This will give me a chance to do that. No, I need special things. I need things I really want to listen to that are gonna really engage me and keep me focused. So that's what I did. And that actually worked, worked really well. Okay, I just took a break for one minute so that I could grab my tripod so that I could hopefully study my camera and also to spray some deep woods off <laughs> because these biting flies have started to um, bother me right now. And at least I still have one that really doesn't care that there's DEET around. So anyway, uh, if anybody knows what to do for those or has a different remedy, let me know. Anyway, let's not be distracted. So we're getting on to logistics and research. Again, I don't like to plan or research, but when I'm traveling these days, I always have a plan. I know tentatively where I'm planning on spending the night. I know about what the temperature is forecasted to be for that place. So when I'm in the mountain, and when I'm in a mountainous area, it's a lot easier because of course I can go up in elevation. A lot of the national forest areas, especially out west, have um, higher elevations that they allow you to get into, which as we know, cools things off. So that is nice. But I always have a plan for where I'm going to stay. And if I have a plan for let's stay at Cracker Barrel and the temperature in the city is going to be okay, I don't need to have a backup because that's, I can count on that. If my first choice is BLM land or National Forest land that is free camping, then I always have a backup because here are things that have happened when, I plan, when I'm planning on staying at National Forest. Number one, it just happened to me tonight. Oh, there's an ATV. Uh, it just happened to me tonight the the GPS took me somewhere that said no trespassing private private road and So I had to find somewhere else or number two the spaces are all filled with people because it is a Thursday and it is We're in the Rocky. We're really close to Rocky Mountain National Park. It's a Thursday night We're getting close to the weekend. So I was worried it would be I might not have a space here so that's another thing that can happen or you get somewhere and it's literally closed. Anyway, you can't count on it. it. There are a lot of things that can happen when you're going to the BLM land, even if it's like this place I was going to today was supposedly just two miles right off, the, right off of a, a state highway. So it should have been relatively straightforward and yet it was not. Okay, so I think that kind of covers logistics. I just do more planning. The third thing we're gonna talk about is I go through my trips in the past and I look at what has frustrated me. What have been obstacles in the past and how could I do better at overcoming them? So I'm gonna glance at my notes and then come back and run through those really quickly because I think there's three or four of them. Okay, I've moved inside the van and I had to turn the air conditioning on because it's only 75 degrees outside, but of course, the van is always hotter than it is outside, even though I have my windows open and stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna leave on my air conditioning for a few minutes and talk to you about this because black flies do not care about DEET, I'm telling you right now. In between these last two videos, I drenched my feet and my lower legs were what was getting eaten alive by these black flies. I was getting bitten. And first I put on my little cutter and that wasn't working. And then I got out the deep woods off and then I sprayed that. And then I made a little circle around the chair where I'm sitting and then that didn't work. So then I got up again and I literally drenched my feet and lower part of my legs and I did all angles and everything. And I still got another bite. Okay, just frustrating. I, I gotta tell you, it's just one of those things about van life. I'm sorry, but the insects, have got to go and mosquitoes and biting flies the worst so far for me anyway let's not go down that rabbit hole too much let me finish this video okay 
back on track, Danny. So what's frustrated me in the past? Little things frustrate me. Um, number one, um, food. I would get mad at myself for eating fast food when on travel days because I had food in the van. And you know what? I just decided, forget it. On travel, When I'm traveling and stuff, forget it. Even if I have food in the van, if getting fast food or sitting down in a restaurant is going to make me feel better or be what I need for the moment, then I'm just going to do it because it doesn't really matter that much. I can, t I can fight that battle a different day. So I let that go. What else? Um, gas prices. I covered this in my last video, but I started looking at gasbuddy.com. There's an app you can download, but my phone has all the storage. I'm already using it all and I don't have enough storage to put on a bunch of apps. So I look at Gas Buddy and I just make sure that I am not overpaying for gas and what it is in nearby places. Another thing that's frustrated me in the past is just getting, having a long day of driving and having stiff, sore muscles, being really tight. And then if I have two or three days in a row, my neck gets all tight, my legs get tight. So I downloaded some stretches that I can do while I'm driving or while I'm stopped getting gas. And I just make it a point to stretch. And it, that worked really well. I also told myself that I was gonna walk every time I got gas, even if I looked silly or whatever, but that did not happen. <laughs> There's something about walking around a big gas station or something I couldn't make myself do, but maybe maybe next time. Okay, so that's, that's what I know about myself and what makes me frustrated. Here's what really makes me frustrated. And here's the last category. This is my own expectations. This is what provides most of the frustration for the entire road trip is my own expectations. And let's just dig into a few, a few examples. When you're on the road, what's frustrating? Other drivers. So if other drivers are going too fast and it's stressing me out or they're on my tail, they're, they're tailing me. Um, I had an accident in 2017 with my kids in the car where I was rear-ended, where someone just was coming, I was at a stop and they were coming full blast didn't even put on the brakes. And I have a little bit of post-traumatic stress from it. So when someone is tailing me too close, it's like a trigger. I should do some EFT tapping on it, but I never really do because I'm always driving and maybe I should pull over and, and try it. I have used EFT for, for stressful and anxious stuff before. So anyway, maybe note to self, maybe I'll try that. But, um, so when people are frustrating me, number one, if someone's going too slow and frustrating me, I slow down. It's a good thing to do whenever I get stressed, as long as I am having some kind of presence of mind, I slow myself down. Whether it's doing a task or getting frustrated, getting something out from the van maybe, or driving, something appears hard, I think it should be easy. I will just slow down. Just slow the pace, slow my speech slow my thinking, slow my actions, slow my speed on the highway. Even if someone in front of me is going too slow, I had a guy just today pulled right out in front of me. We're at the national, we're heading into the national park and it was, I think a, it was a 35 zone, I think heading into the park and he was going about 20 miles an hour. And I was frustrated because he pulled out right in front of me and then because he was going so slow, so my tendency would be to tailgate more, to be anxious and to be stressed. Two things to combat this. Number one, I slow down. I just completely, I have a, I have myself a fear when someone is tailgating me. It doesn't, it never feels good. I wanna be conscious of that and I wanna pull back. It helps them, it also, it could help them. Maybe they don't, maybe they notice them, maybe they don't. But it helps me feel better if I just say, you know what, there's no need for me to go so fast. I'm gonna slow down so I'm not anywhere near this guy. I'm just gonna slow down. Here's another thing, it's a little bit woo woo, but it's, um, I was reading um, Carolyn Meese or Mace, her last name is M-Y-S-S. -S. Anyway, she's a spiritual teacher, but she was, I was reading her book and it said, Whenever you have a judgment against someone, you, if whenever you're reacting, whenever you're judging someone, you're giving them your energy and your power, which we all know this, right? But it was so good to hear it again. And here's what she said. 
that I have not heard anyone say before, and that is that I can call that power back. So honestly, when someone comes up behind me really quickly and is on my tail and I feel that stress come up, now, at least for the moment, I can recognize, oh, look at all this energy that I'm giving to them. Look at all this power that I'm giving to them. And I wanna take that energy back. So I can literally say to myself, okay, take a deep breath, I take that energy back for myself. But what she said, and it actually works, try it if you want to, if, if it sounds too woo-woo, then don't. But I say, I don't know you, and I don't know what's going on with you. Like, it could be anything going on with you. I don't know you, I don't know your life, I don't know your situation as you're driving your car right now, and I have no, I have no place to judge. I, I can't judge because I don't know. So there's this wave of kind of compassion and just understanding that comes over you and automatically you can feel your energy kind of coming back. It just kind of washes over you this kind of relief or whatever, but that's what I do and that has worked with really, really well. So my own expectations, here's another place where my own expectations would get in my way. If I have a destination that I want to get to this day, then if I'm running behind, then I get mad at myself or I get anxious or I get stressed. So you know how you set your GPS for your destination and it says, you know, base, it, it calculates, you know, based on how fast you're going and everything, you should reach your destination at 4.30 p.m. And then let's say I have to stop for gas and I have to eat or something and then I get back in the car, I get back on the road and it says, you'll reach your destination at 5.10. And then all of a sudden I get frustrated. I know it sounds so silly, but who else does this? I get frustrated. So with that, I don't have a trick. I just, I put the GPS away. I automatically add a couple of hours to the amount of time that it says I'm gonna get there. And I just know myself enough to know, don't look at that, don't take it seriously. It is nothing, it is just a number and it doesn't matter. It's not worth the stress or anything. So anyway, those were my strategies going in. Most of them worked. The ones that I applied really worked. And so I hope this helps somebody. So um, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.